Good morning, all. Good Great morning. to be with you. Uh, I always do this for my online persona, so it might be a little unusual for you, but for those out there, I am Demonis. Jesus is my king. You are my family. So today, I'm really Reverend Damon Appel. It's weird for me to say that. With Church of the Exempted, so you go to theexempted.com. But I'm filling in for our beloved Reverend Mason Weaver of Reverend Gospel Ministries. He had a dot org on that and get to that. Um, who's hopefully enjoying himself with family and friends out in St. Louis. But it's good to be here with you, the family, right? And um, I do want to, I think before we get started, I want to have a quick prayer for ourselves and for Mason. And uh, let's, let's stand for guidance. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we hope that our brother Mason has an enjoyable time with family and friends. To enjoy what you've given him. To enjoy your blessings upon him. And Lord, we look for your blessings upon us. And Lord, I ask for your guidance that I speak your words through your Holy Spirit in this day that I might give bread unto your children here and now. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. So um, as we get started today, you know, as looking back, we've done this here, well, between here and the bean. Uh, we've done this for almost a year now, right? So we're a congregation, whether we want to believe so or not. might be a small one, but it is, you know. And um, it's a blessing to have. We were talking about that right before this started, you know, that, uh, um, you know, where, where it all came, how we came together, right? And it's interesting because it hasn't really been that long, right? Uh, that you, you guys have known Mason, that I've known you guys. So... It's hard to say, but sometimes you have to see the hand of God in that, right? So we're special people, and uh, that's what the Lord says, that his people are a peculiar nation, right? Um, so one of the things, and this is going to be a tough one for me, but I'm going to need your help on this. So I know we you know, we started out, and sometimes you know, maybe it's a little rough and all that stuff, but you know, I want to hand this stuff out to you here real quick. Um, there's a couple there. Oops, there's another one. And, uh, you know, on here you're going to see, you're going to see a Bible verse on here. And I'm going to read, it's actually two Bible verses. It's the same Bible, it's the same exact wording. 2 Samuel 22.50 and Psalm 18.49 both say this. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. See, you know, I don't know what everyone's story is. You know, there's a lot of people here. It's 10 o'clock on a Sunday. My guessing is we're probably among the heathen. <laughs> <laughs> but we should be bold that they know who we are. And so I'm going to do my best to sing. And I hope you guys will sing along with me. And I know some of you. Some of you here <laughs> happen to be really, really good at singing. But uh, I think the best way, is, so now these are actually going to have something to do with my sermon today, which is about the faithfulness of the Lord. So uh, let's start that with singing about how great his faithfulness is. And it says first and second, third verses, that's just, there's a second verse that's not printed on here, but we're singing it, all right? Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, 
Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings on mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Thanks, guys. And uh, we'll do the other one later, and you'll understand why it's later. But, um, so I'm not going to put you through that much all at once. Come on. <laughs> And you know, it's, it's, it's great to hear that. Um, I came in Ohio, there was a great church. Um, There's some doctrinal things that I wound up believing them for, but, um, but a great church um, and um, Bible Baptist Temple in Euclid. And they, they, use, they use these majesty hymn books, right? And there's, there's no backup. There's no backup. <laughs> it's just like this. And that's, that's really what, um, you know, that's really what you figure people in Jesus' time did, right? right. Um, we've got some space aliens. Yeah. <laughs> the aliens. <laughs> the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I said, you know, the, the lesson today is the faithfulness of the Lord. And I'm not, you know, sometimes you go to a sermon, there's going to be, or you could go to a seminar, and say, there's going to be eight things, and we're going to have seven points underneath the eight things. <laughs> no, there's going to be two things. There's two major things I want to talk about, the faithfulness of the Lord. And the one is that the Lord was faithful to come and lay down his life for us. You know, it's something that he, he told us he was going to do. You know, and that's, it's the sad part that there's so many people out there who don't understand this, that... He told us exactly what he was going to do in the scriptures. It's amazing, right? You know, um, I'm actually going to skip ahead to something that I was going to use uh, after this, but Isaiah 49, 14 through 16. And it's, but Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her suckling child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet I, will I not forget thee? Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. So the Lord told us back then what he was going to do. And uh, the sacrifice, you know, it's a hard thing for me to do this stuff. You know, a, I don't understand, you know, I have to say, I don't understand how some preachers can go out and just go dry-eyed. Because I think of what the Lord did for us. I think of um, the gravity of coming in the flesh willing. You know, he's God. He's God in the flesh. He did not have to do this. And he said, I'm going to let myself be disfigured for you. Um, you know, so um, the faithfulness of God in Deuteronomy 7, 9, um, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. You know, that's something else we see in the scriptures, you know. Um, Jesus was asked, well, how many times do I need to forgive my brother? You know, I think it's seven times, 70 times, you know. And it wasn't the number. It doesn't, you know, I'm probably misquoting it. I'll catch it online. Um, but, you know, I'm probably misquoting, but it doesn't matter. The number doesn't matter. He just meant, hey, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to forgive you as many times 
as you come and you honestly ask me for forgiveness. So he is faithful to that. And you know, the inter interesting thing, a lot of times I use my digital Bible, and it's on the phone, I set up this laptop, and yeah. <laughs> Not going to be able to do that and speak, but, but you know, um, I've got a great Bible app where I can just search it. And, you know, sometimes you see me in here and I'll have my phone while, while Mason is speaking. I'm not texting someone. <laughs> I'm reading the Bible, you know. I'm, and I, I tend to, too, like when, when, uh, when I'm listening to someone, it's a little harder when I'm watching a YouTube video or something like that, but um, I tend to actually not just hear what the preacher is speaking, the particular verse, but I read before and after because I want to know the full context of it. And I want to meditate on it, yeah. And, um, but the interesting thing is when, you know, now with the digital Bibles, there's, talk about this, there's a lot of bad things about digital, but the good things about digital, right? You can search, you know, like faithfulness, and then you get all these verses. And, and it's usually, it's usually all about the Lord, you know, how much faithfulness he has. Uh, Psalm 36, 5. The mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. Um, just another one here. Um, or right before the one we talked about, because that's the prophetic verse, Isaiah 49, 7. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship, worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. So, not only was he was he's faithful in all the scriptures, but he's faithful to fulfill his promise to us. Or we are weak, and I'll admit I'm not the best always at keeping a promise. Right? So we hand him out like two dollar bills, one dollar bills, I guess. Man. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, in the in the New Testament, you know, we see the same praises to the Lord. Um, especially as the time draws newer, uh, draws closer to the fulfillment of the promises. Now by that I mean as the disciples and the apostles, you know, as, they're moving into, as they're moving into this generation, right? Christ coming, and now we're moving towards the end times. And there's a lot of people who, uh, you know, we could go on about what the end times are. I think we're really close to the end of the end times. But I think there is some scriptural basis to say that everything after Jesus rose was part of that end time procedure. Anyway, so even then, you know, Jesus spoke a parable over the men who were waiting. Um, uh, he spoke a parable at one point about men who were waiting. It was a short parable about men waiting for the Lord to return from a wedding, from their Lord, right? And... Uh, there was an admonishment in there to be watchful and waiting for his return. And he says, For the Son of Man cometh at an hour that ye think not. Um, so, you know, in these days, I see a bit of a disturbing trend. Uh, I do a lot of posting online, different groups and everything. I see a lot of people say, you know, that the Bible is only, you know, certain passages are only meant for certain people. You know, oh, well, that was really meant. He was talking to these people, and they were Jewish, so that was meant to the Jewish people. He was talking to these people, and it was meant for the Gentiles. But, you know, Jesus, we forget sometimes, or some of us don't understand it that way, that Jesus was God in the flesh. It's a hard thing to understand. You know, I, I, I don't think Trinity is a word that appropriately defines what God is. It's beyond our comprehension. We only have to have faith to understand. It is something that we can't understand exactly. And so in that, him being God in the flesh, Jesus always knew exactly what would happen with his words. It wasn't that he just was speaking it to a certain group of people, just to his disciples. He knew exactly that what they were going to do in the future, that they were going to write it down. They were going to write it down and that you and I today would read it in the Bible, that we would understand it for ourselves, that his love came to us, not just to them. 
And not just to them and not just to us, but for all those who came before. Because his redemption was for everyone who always believed truly and faithfully in what was to come in our Lord above. And so the proof of this, so, you know, David said, what are you talking about? Maybe the, I, I read it this way, and this is on. But I think it's proven in Luke, 40, in Luke 12, 41 through 42. Um, after Jesus mentions this parable, Peter gets an inkling of this. He says, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or, un, or even to all? And Jesus, you know, as he sometimes does, doesn't quite answer exactly. He doesn't answer directly. It's kind of like a Trump thing, right? You don't exactly. But, but um, you know, he doesn't answer directly. He, he just, but he says something that is very profound, and it tells you exactly the answer. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. So I think Jesus was saying right there, he's giving the answer. Saying, of course I mean it to everyone. I'm saying to any good servant, I'm going to give them my kingdom. So, um, you know, that coming to our modern times, and we talk about that a lot here, right, with Mason and everything. And God bless Mason for all the things. You know, he, you figure he was doing, he was doing some of the strong conservative stuff probably long before it became fashionable to do. And some of us, I'll, I'll look at myself, you know, I held my light under a bushel, right? I knew a lot of these things for decades. And it was only, it was only when I saw these things come into life in 2015, 2016 that I started started the process of speaking out. And then I think, you know, 2020 is what really moved us, all of us here, you know, to understand, to understand what we're really up against. But, um, you know, so coming back to these modern times, we see all this corruption around us. We think of ways to overcome it, you know. Maybe if we just reelect Trump, maybe if we run office for office ourselves, Maybe we can change the course of things. And truly, we are commanded to be doers of the word, not listeners only. Um, but it's the Lord who said, 2 Thessalonians 3.3, But the Lord is faithful and shall establish you and keep you from evil. So it is the Lord that, that guides us, that ultimately protects us. right? Um, and... There's more to today's corruption. We were talking about this a little bit before. There's more to today's, to today's corruption than just what we see, just with flesh and blood. And that's seen so clearly in Ephesians 6.12. For we, and I'm sure you've heard this before, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Do we not see that today? The movie The Sound of Freedom, the trafficking, all this stuff. This is spiritual wickedness in high places. What is high places? It's the fallen, the fallen angels, right? This goes back to Lucifer, the whole fall. This is what we deal with when people see these apparitions. And we see now today movies, and people in general, witchcraft. It goes by other names. Maybe it's New Age. Maybe it's, maybe it's, I don't know. There's so many names for it, right? But it's there in our face. It's hiding itself. And it's manifesting the evil amongst us. So when we look at that, um, it looks challenging, right? You know, are, are we meant to let the world to rot? I don't think so, because we were given a great commission. Uh, Matthew twenty-eight eighteen, Jesus came and spake to, unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. So there are things that we can do in the flesh, and there are things that we can do only by the power of the Holy Spirit. And even more so, might we in the sharing together of that Spirit. Recently, I was reminded of how essential prayer was, is. You know, I, um, I look at this, and um, I realize the other weekend my prayer tank was low, I think, you know. I used to do these, uh, I used to do daily prayers Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. for a few minutes, and I did that for over a year. Um, and, you know, it's just a hard thing in social media because you see, you know, you don't see tons of clicks. It's like, okay, am I doing this for two people? <laughs> um, but I, in moving down here to Florida, I wound up kind of like um, relaxing a little bit or things were, my life was kind of upturned, right? A little bit of like a fish out of water. I'm near all the fish. Now I'm near all the fish. <laughs> but I feel like a fish out of the water. But, um, you know... So I realized my prayer tank was a little low, but I did a great thing. I was talking with a friend of mine, and he actually said, hey, I'll pray for, pray for you. And I'm like, yes, please. And I realized that sometimes that's my drawback in life. I don't ask, right? I'm tough. I don't, I don't need you. I'll, I'll just do it. I'll pray. <laughs> you know. So it's important that we, that it, our prayers not come just from our own lips, our own minds, but as prayers for each other. And um, I was really stunned at how quick my perception changed. I was kind of anxiety almost, right? And it changed like overnight. And my situation didn't really change. I'm still dealing with some things, but my perception completely changed. And I'm there thinking, like, damn you idiot. Like you've been you've been out on the streets. You've been you've been preaching to people for you know for for years you know and, and, and in the cold and the ice cold up north in Ohio you know um, bold. I I'll, I like to if I'm in a protest outside in the street I like to go all the way up to the curb, get a foot on that curb you know. But so um, you know so I'm there thinking like we're not meant to be fearful. There's another great search term, search fear. And you see like you know and especially in the Old Testament so many times. Fear, you know, fearfulness doesn't come from God. Fearfulness comes from ourselves and from, and from falling into wickedness or falling under the oppression of wickedness. So I think, too, probably what happened is I was under the oppression of some evil forces because I've been speaking a lot online, right? So you got to keep your prayers up. <laughs> so this is leading into... The other point, I said that I had two points, just two points, that the Lord was faithful. The other point was that the Lord wished us well and wished that we would do the same for each other. So before the appointed time of his sacrifice, that he knew he was going to lay down his life for us, he prayed for us, not just that we remain in the faith, but that we be strong together that we be kept in this world to share his gospel until the end and not be removed from it. So there's a lot of Bible reading today, guys. <laughs> yeah, I like to, I like to, right? So this is, uh, I'm going to read this prayer and then we're going to be heading towards the end of what we're, our conversation today. But, but this is when Jesus prayed in the garden for us. John 17, 5 through 11. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had before, with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, 
but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Thou that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them has lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them my, thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So, you know, we've been meeting here, as I said, quite some time. Congregation nearly a year old. Uh, I missed a couple weekends, one that was car trouble. I don't think you guys did this. But I think it's time we do this. You know, um, so, this, this is a funny thing. There's a lot of denominations out there that say, you know, well, hey, you can't do this thing unless you go through this trial and that trial and do this, right? And then there's, there's those that say, well, you can't do this unless you solemnly sit down and you think blah, 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 and you, you make sure you count every of your sins, make sure you're solemnly resolved to them and all this stuff. But there is no restraint on this. Jesus' only command was that we do this in remembrance of him. So it's not about special Sundays, not about special holidays. I put together um, this thing which we're going to wrap up on. And this is an interactive. This is an interactive part. As you, some of you may be guessing where it is going. Um, so this is combined together from Mark, Luke, John, Matthew, and they all talk about the same Last Supper, right? And, um, and I'm going to pass this around, so if everyone's out of bread, p grab a piece of bread and then pass it around, yeah. And I think you all have a little bit of water left if you don't, yeah. Um, so the other thing, while you're doing that, I want you to think of, you know, this, this is going to be a hard part for me to get through, to read through. I've done it actually online before, and it's, it's kind of... I guess it's embarrassing, but it's not, because I love the Lord, right? And, um, you know, I like to think not just about the words. I like to think about the times. Think about Jesus when he was with the, the disciples. He knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew exactly what was going to happen after that dinner. And... And they had been through, and, and think of this too, because they knew something was up. They knew something was up. They didn't know what it was. They didn't really understand what he was saying, that I'm going to go away and all that stuff, right? But now think about this. There's these kind of misfits, right? They said, hey, this guy comes along and says, hey, you follow me. And I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> right? And they're going through all this stuff. They're seeing him do all these good. He's overturning the tables in the temple. You know, he's, he's healing the sick. He's raising the dead. He's crossing the lake because it's the shortest path. And he's saying, hey, don't worry, guys. It's just me. Don't, don't freak out. Right? Doesn't say it in those words, but that's kind <laughs> of right. right? Um, you know, so think about this movie of memories playing back in their minds, right? And that's when I read this, I always think about that. The last thing we've set this up before, I mentioned about how it's meant to be. Is it do this in remembrance of me. I believe that Jesus wanted us to be. If you're sitting, McDonald's, wherever, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe you just feel the need to remember the Lord. This is the way that he told us to do this. So if you've accepted the Lord in your heart, in your soul, as your Savior, there's no problem with doing this every day if you got it. But um, let's, let's go through this. Again, the interactive session. You're going to know the points when I say do this because it's actually Jesus saying that, right? And we'll give a little break and then you can do the other one, all right? So, and he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into the city 
And there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, The master saith, Where is the guest chamber? Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. His disciples went forth, came into the city, and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And he took bread, and he gave thanks, and break it, and gave unto them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. For this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it, new with you, in my Father's kingdom. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straight away glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, Whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give you, uh, unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. But this shall all men know that ye, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So this is the other interactive part, folks. So we sang a song to the Lord, this one. This one we sang to each other and to the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace for the Lord be gracious to you the Lord turn his face to and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace forever the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace forever and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace forever Father in heaven, Lord, what you do for us, what you have done, it is beyond our comprehension. Lord, we praise you this morning, and hopefully we praise you every morning in a way that you are worthy. So Lord, fill us 
with your light, with your love, that we might be obvious to share it unto the world. This world that is in darkness, let us lift it from this darkness. By your power, by your Holy Spirit that dwells within us, Lord, we ask this in your name, in the name of the Savior, mighty and powerful, Lord and Savior, King of kings forever, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening.